The idea that English has more tenses than Arabic seems to be a widespread idea among EFL teachers, uh, students, and even researchers. They tend to think that Arabic has fewer tenses than English. Hurani, for example, published an article in 2008. He conducted a study on 105 Emirati students studying in five different high schools in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, checking their English essays, he found that the highest number of errors uh, were made in the area of subject-verb agreement. And uh, this was followed by tense aspect form uh, errors. Um, and when he wanted to explain why the Emirati students made mistakes in that area, the tense aspect form area, he wrote, the 14 tenses in English are considered one of the most difficult structural points facing the Arab students learning English. Uh, this thing might happen because Arabic has a few tenses only. So he's saying English has 14 uh, tenses while Arabic has only three. And um, he seems to allude to the fact that, or, or to the idea that Arabic doesn't really have perfect tenses, or the equivalent of the English perfect tenses. Uh, Rida published an article in 2012, and he talks about a study that he carried out on 80 EFL uh, students studying at an Iraqi university. Um, he found that uh, the most frequent type of errors that these uh, Arabic, stu uh, Arabic speaking students made was in the choice of the correct tense. Uh, and in explaining why they made uh, such mistakes, he says English has more tenses than Arabic. Al-Balawi uh, published an article in 2016 uh, and in that article, he uh, talks about um, a study that he conducted on 120 female Saudi students. He uh, or she, I believe is uh, a female researcher. Uh, so she collected a sample of written work um, by these uh, 120 students. And she found that they made about 1,000 mistakes. The most common mistake was subject-verb agreement, followed by the misuse of verb tenses. And then explaining why these students made um, mistakes uh, in the area of tenses, uh, she wrote that Arabic has only three tenses, where, whereas English has 14. So the bottom line is, uh, is this, when EFL students, teachers, and researchers uh, think about English tenses versus Arabic tenses, they tend to think that Arabic has fewer tenses than English, that English has perfect tenses, while Arabic doesn't seem to have the equivalent of these uh, English perfect tenses. Now, in my talk, I would like to challenge um, this idea and demonstrate that the Jish Arabic has the equivalence of uh, the English perfect uh, tenses. Of course, because of uh, time constraints, I will only focus on the um, on the Jish Arabic equivalence of the English perfect simple construction. And I would also argue that what, what goes for Jish Arabic goes also for many other um, non-standard Arabic varieties. Now, I have to, to uh, tell you that Jish Arabic, uh, like the, the rest of the uh, Arabic non-standard uh, varieties, does not encode tense morphologically. It does encode aspect 
This is important because you will be hearing me uh, talk about uh, the perfective and imperfective. So I rely on my knowledge as a native speaker of Jewish uh, Arabic, and I rely on NFM in explicating the uh, meanings of the three constructions that I'll be talking uh, about. The first construction. In Jewish Arabic, uh, if I want to talk about an event that took place before another event in the past, or to talk about an event that took place before a certain point in time in the past, I use, or we use, the Jewish Arabic speaker, we use the um, auxiliary verb can, which is the equivalent of English be. Uh, followed by the auxiliary verb thought, which is the equivalent of uh, English become, followed by the active participle of the verb. Let's take a look at an example. Lima ija kunat surat makil ikhtisaha. Lima means when, ija became, kunat I was, surat I became. Makil is the active participle of the verb. Akala, which means eat. So I translate it literally as ear. Uh, I'm not sure, by the way, of this uh, translation. And if the problem is the apple. So the sentence means, when he came, I have eaten. And this, this construction, the can saw plus the apple of the verb, seems to be the equivalent of the, uh, and even the exact equivalent of the English uh, past perfect simple. How can we ex uh, explicate this uh, tense aspect form? So someone can far amil. Amil is the active participle of the verb amil, which means to. Someone can far amil something when something else happened. Before now, someone was doing something for some time. Because of this, something happened. After some time, something else happened. Now notice that in component A, I use before now because. Some languages, uh, uh, when talking about the time of the um, of the action, they don't encode that morphologically but semantically. So I have to say that something happened before now in order to uh, refer to the past. And notice that I use the um, uh, imperfective, which is the progressive aspect, in explicating uh, the simple, the perfective. Aspect uh, in line with uh, Flip, who in 2015 published an article and argued that the imperfective uh, aspect seems to be simpler than the perfective one. Uh, why do I say because of this something happened? Because think about it. Uh, in the simple uh, aspect, in, for example, the uh, past simple in English, when you say I ate an apple. Uh, this means that the apple is not there anymore. So something happened and the apple is not there anymore. Or I cut an apple into two pieces. So uh, after having done this, the apple is not one anymore. Now, the second out of three constructions is this. When you think about uh, the English present perfect simple, uh, we use it in order to talk about an event that took place in the past, but has an effect on the present. So, in, if you ask me, uh, would you like to eat? And I say, uh, no thanks, I've uh, just eaten. It means I did something in the past, but it has an effect on the present, which is I am not hungry. Uh, so, now I have done something. Uh, the Jewish Arabic equivalent of I have done something um, doesn't really exist because um, Jewish Arabic doesn't really differentiate between I ate the apple and I have eaten the apple. I mean, the same form can mean both. However, Jewish Arabic does have the equivalent of I have already done something. For example, I have already eaten the apple. In this case, we use the auxiliary verb far um, and the active participle of the verb. 
So Surat is I became, literally, I became. Nakil is the active participle of the verb akala, which means here. And itifaha diyaku. So, and I have already eaten diyaku is Surat Nakil itifaha. And I don't um, think that there is any difference uh, between them. And by the way, like in English, I have already eaten the apple, which cannot be followed by a time expression. Surat Nakil Tufaha in Jewish Arabic cannot be followed by a time expression. While in Akal Tufaha, uh, I can say Akal Tufaha Bir, I ate the apple yesterday. How can I explicate this tense as to form? Someone thought I made something, someone did something before now. Because of this, you can know something. Why did I add this component? You can know something. Because again, whenever we use the uh, present perfect simple in English or its equivalent in, uh, in Arabic, we always refer to uh, the present and that the adversary can know something. Uh, for example, if you uh, tell me uh, that you watched a movie and uh, that you uh, love it and that you recommend it and I say I have watched it many times the minute I say I've watched it many times you can know something the agency can know that I like the movie a lot the last the third and the last construction that I would like to talk about uh, is the equivalent of the English future perfect simple so in Arabic whenever we want to talk in Jewish Arabic whenever uh, we want to talk about an action that will happen in the future before another action or before a certain point in time in the future. We use uh, the auxiliary verb bikun, uh, which is to be, followed by the auxiliary verb sar, which is become, and the active participle of the verb. Here's an example bikuni, surti, kalustiya, issa, issa, kamsi. Bitkuni is you will be. Surti means you became. We use the um, the uh, perfected form of uh, of the auxiliary verb sar, while we use the imperfected form of the uh, verb bitkun. So you will be, you became. Mkhalistia is the active participle of the Jewish Arabic equivalent of uh, English Finnish. So it would be finisher of it. Say out the hour and five, and this exactly means you will have finished it by five. How can I ex uh, explicate this thing as the form? Uh, I do it like this someone becomes Farah is something. After now, something, someone will be doing something. Because of it, something happens. After some time, something else will happen. Conclusion. Um, so in this talk, I have talked about and I have shed light on the Jewish Arabic counterparts of three um, English perfect simple constructions. Um, and, and this can be regarded as a contribution to the field of theoretical linguistics, um, both the morphology, uh, syntax, and also semantics. I have uh, provided an explication of each of uh, these uh, constructions and um, the explications uh, are simple and universal, as you all know. And the second contribution is to the field of applied linguistics because um, uh, when, when our students, for example, in Jish know that Jish Arabic has the uh, equivalence uh, of the English perfect simple constructions, and of course the rest of the um, uh, English uh, tense aspect forms. This will lead to positive transfer, uh, which which facilitates learning. So that's all. I hope I not exceeded my uh, time.